are these people? Santos, this guy, um, Florida guy, you know, um, where's the, there we go. Um, but yeah, he wants to break up Google, uh, which is real interesting from a Republican candidate. Um, want, you know, some business regulation. We're going to, we're going to find out why, what, what do you think it is, Colin? What's your guess? A Republican wanting to break up, um, a corporation. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like there's some type of money that might be involved in this for him. Um, or there might be some dirt. <laughs> I mean, I blame the Florida school system. Not, not me, <laughs> you know, like not my fault. Um, but I knew he was something. You got to give me credit. Um, or I would, or he, this is an example of Republicans actually listen to their constituents generally. And, yeah. and it's the idea of like Google, like as far as, you know, the censorship, like YouTube for us mm -hmm. and then other channels, you yeah. know, they hear a lot of this stuff. So it's the idea of to like out, saying the right things in so order to be elected. DeSantis privately called for Google to be broken up. So he's oh. got a private position and a public position. Um, right. Keep that in mind. Um, so this is by ProPublica. I couldn't find the exact author. I'm sorry. I'm sure ProPublica will tell me. Um, but in previous unreported comments made in 2021, DeSantis said technology companies like Google should be broken up by the U.S. government. DeSantis, widely considered a presidential hopeful, made the remarks at an invite-only retreat for the Teneo Network, a private and confidential group for elite conservatives. ProPublica and documented obtained video of the event. They're just too big. They have too much power, DeSantis said. I think they're exercising a more negative influence on our society than the trust that got broken up in the early 20th century. So also supporting that, interestingly enough. Um, he added that large tech companies are ruining our country. There's a very negative influence, and so I think you need to be strong about it. DeSantis calls to break up large tech companies occurred at the Teneo Network's annual retreat in 2021. As ProPublica documented recently reported, the Teneo Network aims to crush liberal dominance across many areas of American society. According to its chairman, Leonard Leo, the influential legal, influential legal activist and longtime leader of the Federalist Society. Oh, uh, God. Uh-huh. Uh, so, I would not thought, I would not have guessed this. Um, uh, Andy Kroll and Nick, so, Sergei, Nick Surgery documented, FYI. So, Reef, very yeah. quickly for the people in the chat that may not know who the Federalist Society is, can you give yeah. a brief description as to who are they and why um, they? Are like, I know of them. We've talked about them before on the show, have we not? Didn't you bring a thing on I'm them? I'm sure we have. But basically, a lot of our Supreme Court judges, the conservative ones, they come out of this society, basically. So it's yep. very much pro-Christian, like probably to the extreme, like very fundamentalist Christian, like values, you know. For a textual type. and originalist interpretation of the U.S. Constitution, right? They're, um, what is so that, David purists. McIntosh, Spencer Abraham, yeah. Lee Lieberman. Right, so they're um, purists in terms of how they interpret the constitution yep. essentially so very much very conservative very i'll argue rigid mm -hmm. um and very much centered around a, a, again a very rigid form of christianity I fundamental would argue around that. yes fundamentalist yes um desantis office did not respond to requests seeking comment teneo declined to comment um, in recent years, big tech has emerged as a favorite target for Republican lawmakers and activists, even as prominent conservatives have amassed huge followings on Twitter, Facebook, and other platforms. 
pointing to such high profile examples as Donald Trump's suspension from Facebook and Twitter's decision to briefly block a story about Hunter Biden's laptop. Um, Republicans claim that U.S. tech companies have systematically suppressed conservative viewpoint and interfered with elections in ways that have helped Democrats. In 2021 study issued by the New York University, researchers concluded those assertions were baseless. From where again? Um, the Why claim of anti-conservative animus on the part of social media companies is itself a form of disinformation, a falsehood with no reliable evidence to support it. See two previous examples. Um, the researchers for the NYU Stern Center for Business or, and Human Rights wrote. Or just see our channel as uh -huh. it's heavily surprised. Yeah. <laughs> like, they, they, these are not Republic. Like, this is my issue of uh, both Republicans and Democrats. But Democrats look at this and go, like, there's only attacking Democrats. And Republicans are like, yeah, but it's only targeting Republicans. It's like, well, no, it's classist, like, bullshit. It's Hunter Biden's laptop because they didn't want it found out. Like, right. You know, in like, the same way that Republicans will cover themselves when yes. they don't want to be found out, too. Yeah. So, yeah, it's very, as you said, you're right. It's very much class. Right. It's like, the, the government has the ability to come into these tech companies and tell them whatever they want, i.e. AOC telling Democracy Now! to retract things because this, this, and this without any right. pushback, you know? Right. So um, liberal lawmakers and poly as policy experts have also called for stronger antitrust enforcement of major tech companies during the 2020 presidential presidential race. Elizabeth Warren campaigned on a platform of breaking up Amazon, Facebook, and Google, saying they had too much power over our economy, our society, and our democracy. In 2021, Democrats in Congress introduced legislation to split up tech firms, but the bills never became law. I wonder why. Mm. Um, Matt Stoller, not to bore people, okay. um, an antitrust expert, who works at the American Economic Liberties Project, said it's hard to tell if DeSantis' private comments indicate genuine concern about corporate concentration of power or just anger at large firms perceived to be hostile to conservatives. Um, Leonardo Leo had a billionaire recently leave his entire fortune to this foundation that he controls to spend at will in order to get more conservative judges on the bench, says Indy Left. Um, Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, and Coney Barrett are Federalist Society members. Yes. Which he also said. Um, so, there is a war on the right about antitrust, Stoller said. I'm skeptical, but open-minded that DeSantis wants to do something serious about economic power. Stoller added that he was more intrigued by DeSantis' decision to call for breaking up tech in an event so closely associated with Leonardo Leo. If Leo buys that argument, Stoller said... And it means that a lot of federal judges might tip in that direction too. A spokesperson yeah. for you Leo think? declined to comment. Yeah. You think? <laughs> um, Teneo's retreats are an invite only affairs limited to its members, their spouses, and special guests. ProPublica documented obtained um, a video of DeSantis' remarks about big tech, which took place during a longer convention between DeSantis and Vivek Ramswami. Uh, Ramaswamy? A biotech sure. interpreter entrepreneur who is now running for president as a Republican. As governor, DeSantis has repeatedly singled out tech and social media companies, saying their actions may be one of the most pervasive threats to American self-government in the 21st century. The legislation he signed in May 2021 20, not only seeks to give Floridians the ability to sue tech companies and win monetary damages, it also empowers the state attorney general to bring cases against tech companies under the Florida Deceptive and Unfair Trade Practices Act. Tech companies are challenging the law, and its fate remains unclear. In February this year, DeSantis introduced a plan to create what he called a Digital Bill of Rights for Florida citizens. The proposal, billed as a way to protect privacy and eliminate unfair censorship, would ban TikTok on state government devices and block local and state employees from coordinating with big tech companies to censor protected speech, 
But unlike some of his fellow conservatives, DeSantis barbed public remarks about pig tech and stopped short of urging the U.S. government to break up those tech companies in this new book, The Courage to be Free. It makes only a passing reference to enforce antitrust laws against large corporations that are wielding what is effectively public power. In the remarks of the Teneo Network retreat, DeSantis described tech companies as monopolies that have more power over our lives than the monopolies of the early 20th century ever had, and it's not even close. He listed tech companies' extensive data collection practices and their ability to shape core political speech as evidence of big tech's monopolistic powers. He went on to say that tech platforms enforce their terms unevenly, adding that if you have a conservative vo- viewpoint, you might, you're much more likely to get censored, you're much more likely to get deplatformed. And in response to critics who might say it's not the role of government at any level to insert itself into the workings of private businesses, DeSantis offered a sharp rebuttal. Protecting the rights of folks to participate in political speech, I think, is an absolutely appropriate role of government, he said, and I think that we should do all that we can. When pressed by Ramaswamy on stage about using government power to shrink big tech companies, DeSantis stood by his position. Those big companies are basically an arm of the ruling regime, he said. Yeah, that should be something that uh, should be done. And when asked if he feared that breaking up U.S. companies would strengthen China's position in global markets, DeSantis appeared unbothered, saying that he believed antitrust action was still the correct course. God, wouldn't it be nice if, like, Democratic, like, interviewers would interview this way? Yeah. Like, these tech companies are ruining our country, he said. There's a very negative influence. You need to be strong about it. And so that would be the biggest concern I would have. My concern would not would be not having massive concentrations of power that are capable of silencing dissent, enforcing an orthodoxy, and obviously interfering in elections, which we saw they did in 2020. But what do we know, Colin? You got no Regarding. friends in Washington, D.C. Oh. Well, technically, he's not in Washington, D.C. He's in Florida. Tallahassee's the same. Like, (laughs) (laughs) you know, like in that particular area of Tallahassee, no no need for that. Um, So here's my take on this. I feel like he's caught between two rows. On one hand, especially given his connections to the Federalist Society, which makes sense in light of, you know, wanting to break up Google, you know, in the, in the form of, you know, against censorship and all of that. Yep. Given his background of what he's currently doing in your state, it makes a whole lot of sense to have that private position. Mm-hmm. That being said, the public position, there's money involved. And especially if yep. he's looking to be president, you know, he can't, he can't go, go off guns blazing at Google too much. Because he's going to need them eventually, especially if he does end up being president right. in terms of the money and like the access that he's able to get. It's so, also a, sh- a shot across the bow, in my opinion, right? It's like, I'm about to run for office. If you fuck with me, I, I can pull this shit. Right. Like, so let me have some room to run. Like, it's it's right. it's that. It's like, give me... And, and it's also, if it's like a continuous thing. It's like, I can mm-hmm. use this to bully you, you know? Right. And like, you, you so, best believe Trump is also going to be on that, you know? Yes. And Definitely. he might also put, pick out stuff about like, well, you were going to ban TikTok, you know? Well, like, the difference is, and I'm not sure how far along Trump is coming along with this, but he Trump, at least there were talks for a while that, he was um he's trying to start his own social media like company or whatever trump so trump assuming and i wouldn't guess if he if this follows through that he would probably have something up and going at some point within the next year or so yeah and trump can use that to say whatever he wants however he wants without any censorship DeSantis, unfortunately, doesn't have that kind of infrastructure yet to be able to kind of counter that. So yeah. that's why I feel like he has to have these these dual positions in terms of, yeah, I'm for it because, like, 
Google can easily censor me or any one of my colleagues at their choosing. Yeah. That being said, they can also give me a lot of access and money if I play my cards right too. Pretty so, much. you know, so yeah, it's going to be interesting to see which way he's going to go. Well, I can almost guess which way he's going to go, but yeah, I mean, know, this is very... great acting from him. In my opinion, it's like, you know, like I said, it's, it's, he's trying to play, play the field a little bit, see how people are going to react to it, you know? Right. Right. So, you know, but at the end of the but, day, it's I mean, exit stage left at the end of the scene. So, you I, know, given his private stance, I think, especially on the left, would be a little more, I would say, sympathetic. I yeah. think, especially for people like us, I mean, who's going to do that. whatever the deep state slash powers want well, them to do. They're so. already, well, they're already doing it. Like, yeah. at, at least with us, you know, like, you know, the fact that we have to play the algorithm in order to try and even build this channel and build a community, you know, like, you know, and I made this rant to you privately, I think, believe it was last week, you know, like, we did several stories regarding Marianne, not to say they were, well, compared to what we normally do, but like, yeah. they got larger, much larger than average viewership that we would get normally. Like, I talked about last week on this show about like my organization that I'm a part of crafting organization uh, crafting legislation it helping to craft legislation for DC. I think right now that may has gone under 20 views. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> it, you know the algorithm is not going to favor like that stuff, you yeah. know. So you know but the but idea will- like Focus on the drama, focus on the electoral shit much more than anything right. else. 